Before the comedy industry blacklisted him, Louis C.K. was revered as a comic who pushed the boundaries, and everybody accepted his jokes were in character. However, when his inappropriate actions came to light in the Me Too movement, his acts seemed much darker. The truth is Jesus was black, but you don't see that often, black Jesus. Hey man, get me the fuck down from here. Whatever, all right. <laughs> Even before his cancellation, CK angered many with his boundary-pushing jokes, which dealt with taboo subjects. His 2015 monologue on Saturday Night Live caused a media storm for many reasons, including his comments about child molestation. Many viewers found the jokes to be inappropriate and offensive, and there was a lot of backlash on social media and in the press. There's no worse life available to a human than being a caught child molester, and yet they still do it! Which from, you can only really surmise that it must be really good. I mean, from their point of view. Jesus Uncrossed was a parody of Quentin Tarantino's movie Django Unchained. But instead of a slave seeking revenge, it featured Jesus Christ returning from the dead to take revenge on those who crucified him. Jesus H. Christ! The age is silent. The sketch portrayed Jesus as a violent, vengeful character complete with guns and swords and it drew criticism from viewers for its irreverent portrayal of Jesus. The sketch was criticized by many religious groups for being disrespectful and blasphemous, and many viewers felt that it went too far in its depiction of violence and gore. Despite the controversy, Jesus on Cross was generally well-received by critics and has become a memorable SNL sketch. Jesus! Oh, <laughs> chill, man, chill! When you get to heaven, say hi to my dad. Canteen Boy was a recurring character played by Adam Sandler on SNL in the 90s. The character was a naive and innocent camp counselor who often found himself in awkward and uncomfortable situations with his boss, played by Alec Baldwin. <laughs> in one sketch, Baldwin's character is showing making sexual advances towards Canteen Boy, leading to a controversial and uncomfortable scene. Some viewers felt that the sketch was making light of pedophilia and that it was in poor taste. Others said that the sketch was meant to make fun of the power difference between adults and children and to show how helpless people need to be watched out for and protected. Ah, what the hell is that? I don't know, it must have been a bed bug. Hey, Bob. <laughs> Hey, penis looks great today. <laughs> hey, I'd like you guys to meet uh, Doug. Hey, Doug. Hey, Doug. Hi, guys. Hey, pretty small penis there. Huh? Penned by a young Conan O'Brien in 1988, the nude beach sketch included the word penis over 40 times. Although viewers might not bat an eye watching it today, the sketch generated 46,000 letters of complaints upon its release. It's safe to say that references to genitalia were still pretty taboo back then. I go to this place in Long Island. They do great work. Yeah? You, yeah. Got, an, you got an address? Sure. Give it to you. Hey, I'll write it on my penis so I won't forget it. In fact, the main reason that the sketch even came to exist was because the FCC had updated censorship limitations only a week prior to include the word penis. Conan really took that opportunity and ran. Despite the controversy it stirred up, the nude beach sketch still remains a beloved one, prone to making anyone laugh. Here was the penis that song he'd sing me. Penis, 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 long. Penis, 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 penis all day long. This entry is a great example of a sketch that's impeccably written, but dark as hell. Meet Your Second Wife sketch is a fake game show in which middle-aged men are surprised by meeting their future second wives, who are actually young girls. What kind of things are you interested in? Horses. I guess I'll see you again in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it's seven. <laughs> the sketch is a satire of the large age gap that can sometimes exist in relationships and the societal expectations around marriage and dating. However, the sketch was widely criticized for its depiction of underage girls as romantic partners for older men and for being insensitive to survivors of child abuse. 
Many viewers found the sketch to be in poor taste and offensive, and it prompted a public apology from SNL creator Lauren Michaels. She just found out she's three months pregnant with, you guessed it, your second wife. <laughs> Let's show Toby the sign again! In a sketch from the year 2000, Jimmy Fallon impersonated former cast member Chris Rock with full blackface makeup. Man, oh man, read this book! <laughs> to be a millionaire and guess what? Not a lot of black folks on the show. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, people didn't get loud about the sketch until way after it aired. I'm not saying people weren't upset, but the backlash didn't really come out in full force until around 2020. Fallon had stated he deeply regrets doing the sketch in hindsight. Although the sketch's controversy was fortunately resolved in a friendly manner, it still serves as a reminder to hold celebrities accountable for past behavior. Not a lot of black folks on the show. Know why? Because black folks don't like to answer questions. <laughs> oh, they want to be millionaires, but you got to ask that kind of question. Like, in 1981, how many grams of crack did Rick James smoke when he recorded Super Freak? <laughs> Fast, slow, rain, Snow. This infamous sketch starring two SNL titans sees Chevy Chase interviewing Richard Pryor for a janitorial position. What starts as an innocent game of word association charges up very quickly, as Chase begins spouting racial slurs, eventually saying the N-word on live television. <laughs> Dead hunk. <laughs> The sketch is meant to be a commentary on racism and prejudice in society, and it uses humor to shed light on these issues. However, the use of racial slurs in the sketch caused a lot of controversy and criticism at the time, and it continues to be a controversial moment in the history of SNL. Colored. Redneck. <laughs> Jungle Bunny. Pack of wood. <laughs> You'd think a skit with Blake Lively and Kenan Thompson would be one of the best ever, but it's definitely one of the most controversial. Back in 2009, when Tiger Woods was revealed to be having a string of affairs behind his wife's back, SNL filmed a skit where Thompson, who played Woods, was making a statement. And then his wife took them off camera. When he came back, he looked battered, insinuating that his wife was beating him up. One good thing about this is that I can get rid of this old thing and get a new model. <laughs> this sketch mocked domestic abuse survivors and caused quite a stir among many. SNL has never been one to hold back on criticizing or satirizing famous politicians, whether they deserve it or not. However, this Weekend Update sketch pushes the envelope perhaps too far, poking fun at former New York governor David Patterson for his physical disability. Whenever I hear booze, I know I'm in Albany. And whenever I smell cheap cologne and raccoons, I know I'm in New Jersey. <laughs> Patterson is blind, and Fred Armisen plays up on this in an extremely exaggerated way. The sketch was widely criticized by disability rights groups, who felt that it was insensitive and offensive to make fun of someone's disability. The controversy prompted an apology from SNL creator and executive producer Lauren Michaels, who acknowledged that the sketch was in poor taste and offensive. You should be sorry. You have poked so much fun at me for being blind that I forgot I was black. <laughs> What starts off as a touching moment between father and daughter quickly takes a jaw-dropping turn for the worse in this incendiary sketch. At first, they share an emotional goodbye, leading viewers to think she's joining the military. But the whole sketch gets turned on its head when a car pulls up with men holding guns. Take care of her. Death to America. Many did not find the humor in this abrupt, unsettling sketch, especially since at the time, many young girls were fleeing Syria to join the terrorist organization. The sketch reinforces ageless questions about the ends and limits of parody.